you were if you were to ask God, okay, let's say he materialized right here and you can tell ask him anything you want. If you were to ask him what he has lost that would cause him to throw a party if he got it back, what do you think he would say? Probably the matter. Man? Okay. See ya. You know, I um I would say the the barrier between right and wrong. If he lost that, you know, and then he was able to get it back, that would be worth throwing the party for. You guys all nailed it. This is actually kind of like a modern retelling of a story Jesus told in uh, the Gospel of Luke. He talked about a woman that, that lost a coin and uh, frantically would do anything to find it again. And Jesus actually said at the end of this story that he told that that whenever he finds one human being that comes back to him, uh, that, that heaven throws a party, literally, uh, out of excitement for that one person that returns to him. And it, it was kind of a way for Jesus to to um, tell us how meaningful a relationship is with each one of us and how excited he is when one of us comes back to a personal relationship with him. Uh, so I guess the last question is, and I don't know what your time is like, so don't feel like pressured or anything, but do you have a couple minutes? Would it be at work at I start at two. work in three, so. so oh, so you, oh, you see a minute. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm all right. And then I got to yeah. run. Okay, well, here's a short question. Would it be okay if Dwight uh, tells you a little bit about how God got him back, how God found him. He'll keep it short. So we have lots to talk about. He asked me this uh, one second before he came over here. So, uh, you know, it's interesting to talk about throwing a party or you find the college, the vinyl. I mean, that's that's my that's my age group. <laughs> my, the, the most popular guys on campus, I went to school out in Ohio, had hundreds of vinyl records. And it's interesting, if you did, you know, put a vinyl record in the wrong slot and you put it someplace else, and you're always going through all this stinking things trying to find them. Until I was age 20, 23, I ran from God, you know, so I was running from God for a long time. Age tw and I did, you know, our college was the hippie generation. It's funny to see the jeans all ripped apart now, because that's the trend, because that, that was us. And, you know, my hair was in a ponytail. There's much longer than yours. <laughs> exactly. It's kind of, kind of revolved around. Age 23, I came to a point where, though, I said, either God is who he says he is, and Jesus Christ is who he said he is, or it's a lie. And so I, I came face to face with really a... a I guess a why in the road. And so I really looked at that, and, and it was one of those things that I never really stopped to think about. And so when I finally stopped to think about it, I had to, I had to face it. That when, I, when I looked at it, looked at the evidence, I, I became a lawyer. I was in law school at the time. I was a lawyer for 10 years. There, so you that's know, the, what you mean by <laughs> That was even after that, yeah. My wife even married me, even though I was going to become a lawyer. Who knows? But you know, even with that, with that whole idea, I investigate all the claims of Christ, I came to the conclusion that Jesus Christ was exactly who he said he was. And so I surrendered my heart to God and said, you know, why would I run from God if I've discovered this is the truth? The problem was I never stopped. And so my, when I did that, I surrendered my heart to Jesus Christ and said, you are the Son of God. You did sacrifice your life to me. I surrendered my life to Christ. And I'll tell you, there was a party thrown in heaven my day, that day, March 2nd, 1978. Five years later, March 2nd, 1983, my first daughter was born, Abigail. who is now 26, a photographer out in California. But I just wanted to let you know that day a party was thrown is an amazing day. It's changed my life. So just that's what it's that's what it's like. So when you say you're running from God, um, my did running, you, did I you do not have any spirituality at all. No, I or? had some. I had some background in it, but I it was more like I ignored it. It was more of a um, if I was to take a legal term, it was negligence. Mm -hmm. It wasn't intentional. It was more of a negligence of just ignoring who God was and what God's all about. And because I was all about me, my life was all about me and how I would get ahead. And I've been trained in, in a number of things. And then in first year law school, I mean, we're trained to pick everything apart. And I was in first year law school and this is when this happened and it was amazing. Well, I'm picking everything apart and understanding how an issue, I don't know if you have any of you taken pre-law, but how an issue changes on one word. And I began to look at the, the Bible and going, okay, I look at it, compare it, and look at it, compare it, look at the facts of history, 500 eyewitnesses. I mean, it was... The evidence was so demanding, it was just easy for me to surrender my heart to God. But it was all about me before that. You know, we were taught, how do you succeed? At least in the 70s, they said, step on everybody, get to where you need to get. I was pretty good at that. You know, I was pretty good at that in college. And 
and uh, unfortunately, I think it's, it's easy to be good at that for anyone if they if they decide to do that. But it was obviously a wrong, and I, and I regret those years that I missed. You know, like you guys have an opportunity at this age to say, okay, because now my life is more about people who, you know, if we can find the most broken people in this community, that's the people I want to go to and say, hey, I just want to come alongside you and, and help you. And we have, you know, I'm meeting with a guy not too long from now, very successful in business, totally broken because he's got some serious drug issues. Um, you know, a friend, a friend of mine, him, who actually left right before you came here, uh -huh. he is an atheist, and I have absolutely no issue with that. Unfortunately, he's a dick about it. He's a what? He's a dick about it. Oh. To Wait, he, what, what did you say he is? A dick, dick about, about it. it. Yeah, but before that, you said he's atheist. an atheist. Oh, an atheist? So, I completely respect other people's beliefs and ideals and stuff, but when it comes to debating him, he usually pulls up people who are fanatic, you know? And I've had several people who are in terms of fanatic in my, uh, my family, which is often, you know, Protestant. I can't get sorry. Sir, See you, Alex. Good buddy. talking to you. Yeah, I believe right before, right after this, like my uncle, he oh, originally sure. uh, denounced his faith at an earlier age, and later on he refound it. And it was like, awesome, you know, that, that's great. And I completely support that, of course. The issue was, he became weird about it, yeah. yeah? And it's sad because he had a lot of knowledge, a lot of stuff, but, like, he had issues holding jobs because he would pray in the morning for, like, eight hours straight. Mm -hmm. And while, of course, there's no issue talking to God when you, for, when you seclude yourself in reality and all that, or you become like, like I remember I used to love Pokemon and stuff. I've seen pastors on TV claim how Pokemon is the devil that is teaching kids to summon evil creatures through cards and witchcraft books. I'm just like, no, it's not. Yeah, it's really not. It's kind of so. like I was told as a young person some of the songs were uh, had some back masking and all kinds of stuff. And it, maybe they did, but it wasn't my kind. Of to that. The thing I, I encourage people though is, like you said, some friends who are, to use your words, a dick about it. They, um, I have two children from Africa who are black. I have two children from China. I have a son from Korea who's uh, serving right now in the U.S. military. But I, and I have two other domestic adoptions, one biracial. You know, I'll hear sometimes, and I was in the South for a while, and I would hear somebody say, well, something about somebody's color of skin. And I go, no, you got to understand, the person's a jerk. It doesn't matter what color skin they are. Because somebody's a Christian doesn't exempt us from sometimes being jerks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or having some. But to lump everybody in that same thing yeah. is the thing. And so that's why I think I think Jesus among us. Well, I, a do, would you consider Jesus a radical? A what? Would you consider Jesus a radical? Well, it depends on what ideals you hold him up to. If you hold him against the ancient Roman ideals, he was indefinitely a radical. If you hold him up by um, ideals of a couple hundred years ago, then and, well, depending on which ideal, if you hold him up against like... The culture. Yeah. Put it against the culture. Our culture right now? Sure. Dep again, it depends on which group because there are some who. Well, there's different sections of every culture. And again. Oh, because radical, radical by definition is counterculture. Well, the guys, it's not counterculture. I mean, if you take if you take the elements of our culture that are considered unjust or Sodom and Gomorrah-ish, then obviously these are radical. If you were to take it against the idea that people try to hold up, or think they hold up to whether they do or not, or treat your neighbor as oneself, and you know, uh, look at, look at the log in your own eye before you look at the speck in another, or he who casts the first stone must be, you know, all, sure. all that is ideals that our culture usually likes to believe and holds itself up to, whether they're attributed to religion or not. But that doesn't necessarily mean they do it, because again, our culture can be quite hypocritical, believing that we assume, believing that we follow our ideals whether or not we do. And I have to go to work. You, got, you guys got to get going. Hey, thanks for your time. Thank you, man. Yeah. I don't know where you guys uh, stand with Jesus personally, but he loves you guys dearly. And uh, yeah, thanks for chatting. Okay.